Good morning, FYI family, wherever you folks are joining us from this morning. Welcome to the broadcast, folks. For your information, it's the first day of November. Believe it or not, we told you October is running. It had legs, folks. It was Usain Bolt and steroids. October ran out on us. It's the first day of December. Isn't the official start of the Christmas season? Here, at least in the 592, is the official start of the Christmas season. Folks, we are happy that we're with you folks. Wherever you're joining us from this morning, it's a privilege to be here with all of you. I feel like since we come back, they're fighting us left, right, and center. But good to see all of you on the live this morning. Sheena Hazel, Kyle Bino, Randy J. I see Debbie Collins is here. Anjan is here as well. Luan Hall is here too. Kyle Bino is here. Again, good to see Savannah Page and Clear Lexus, Charmley, Richmond, folks, wherever you're joining us from this morning. Happy 1st of November. Happy 1st of November to each and every one of you. Love and Harry Churan, Kelman Prasad, folks, it's old house and old house, you know. Old house on old house. And we are super happy, Rohan Basantrum and all the other folks, we are super happy that you folks are here with us, trying to make sure that we got everything lined up. We are very, very happy that you folks are here with us this morning. It's a pace and power morning. We are delighted to have all of you on the live. We see we got Shannon Blackman. Folks, what are you guys having this morning? What are you guys having this morning? Oh, we got some tea bag tea there in. What are you what are you lovely folks having at your end this morning? Great to see all of you on the live. See, Marcus Skinner is here. Erwin Don Cook is here. Yolanda Thomas is here as well. All our favorite folks joining us right off the bat, folks. Dolly Anderson. Is here with us as well. Good to see you, Dolly. How are you folks in doing? Sharon more curious is joining us as well, folks. And we just want to make sure that we are shared to all of the uh, valid and credible places so that folks can get information. Folks can get information. We are super happy that all of you are with us this morning. Good, folks. We are delighted that you all are here with us. We see your old boy Jack Neal, like he's now savior of the Venezuelans. Savior of the Venezuelans? Who knew? Who knew, good folks? And we can talk a bit about that as well. Yeah. Savior of the Venezuelans. <laughs> I thought they already had Simon Bolivar. But like they got Jack Neal too. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. Sean of Fortune says, remember, Sherry, we're getting a steady blackout, so we have to wrap up. <laughs> in conclusion, Shona, in conclusion, folks, welcome. If you're now joining us and one of the places we're streaming to, uh, welcome to each and every one of you. It's a privilege that you wonderful folks are here with us. Nothing short of a privilege. Folks, we're just trying to make sure we got our ducks in a row at our end. Good to have all of you, as we said, on the live this morning, good folks. And Marie Selby, we see you there, Anne Marie. Sion Salvatore Magnet Barrow. <laughs> uh, Salvatore. Jacqueline Johnson is here with us as well, folks. You know something on the fret we? You know, this early morning. We're making sure we got our ducks in a row, good folks. Something on the fret we? But good to have all you good folks on the live. Suddenly, Jack Neal is the savior of the Venezuelans. You see this chameleon character that we got to deal with? Hmm? I saw Maduro saying that your friend is war mongering. Why didn't come in after Jack Neal? Why all of a sudden Jack Neal is the best friend? We can talk with all of that book. We can talk the thing. Suddenly, Jack is a friend. You see, wickedness in this world can't finish. Or when done, all the folks in the FYI family, Al and Marie Selby, Sean of Fortune, Sean of Innes, 
All the asses. Deborah Pearson. Kevin Joe. Good to have you on the live. We're we happy that you guys are joining us this morning. We got a lot to share with you, fantastic folks. Trying to get our ducks in a row here. Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> we, we try and don't know how far we get though. We try and good folks. As we said, good to see all of you on the live this morning, folks. Good to see all of you on the live this morning. All right, I think we're in a better place. We're in a better place than when we first started. All right. <laughs> we're in a better place than when we first started. So good morning, folks. Wherever you're joining us from this morning, it's a privilege to have all of you folks on the live with us, as we say. Good to have all of you folks on the live, and we are hastening, folks, to some of the issues, some of the events we're covering at our end. And it's such a privilege to see Amit Sital here. Um, Amit says it's rapid load shedding in Madia. Yeah. Rapid load shedding in Madia. Beatrice Selby, Magnell Barrow. Good to see you, Magnell. Finel Innes, Elizabeth Howard on the live as well. Good to see you, Elizabeth. Good to see you out from parts. You see, you just come. I know you just come because we explained why we why we didn't have a show out from part. You know, five to eight, we said to come on. Couldn't get the internet. At quarter to nine, we said, all right, that's it. We give up, we give in, we give out. Paul Charles, we see you there. Gil Mingo, is it, is it Nathalie Harry? Good to see you, Nathalie. Folks, the first lady apparently deceiving people. I remember when they were building these kiosks. Or these kiosks. Is there a plural? By the seawall. They said to the vendors, oh, y'all can get them. We want to uplift y'all. We want to move y'all up in this life. Moving on up to the east side. We want to elevate y'all. Now when the chaos is finished, they can't find the first lady. I'm all for organized vending. I'm all for organized selling. But you see deceitfulness? You see deceitfulness? Amit, Leon Simon, Edward Brooms, Rina Cummins. You see deceitfulness? And I got asterisk by she long time now. I got asterisk by this one long time now. Well, she undertook. Beautification exercise down there by the Seawall Bank scenario. Right. It's all guy needs tax base money. All guy needs tax base. Projects are overlapping. First lady building house, infrastructure building house, ministry, uh, housing, central housing and planning. They build, everybody building house, building kiosks. It's total confusion. Some of the vendors down there said she promised them. Those were going to be their new accommodation. That's what the folks said. But then, like what they're hearing now, former mayor Ubrach Narain had their ear, or they had his ear, quite recently. And here's some of what they said to him. Oh, chee, them want no vendor with you. Then come chasing you. Yeah, what they say, so them why sell nobody, sell them why sell out, they no fend out, they. But she, all the vendors, them the chase it. All the vendors, them, you got to cheerful look after what you're doing. What them good, what them, what them pay is good. All the vendors, they chase it. They want to go and deep and rap people, they don't want to do it. Who are you? Three children, two boys in school, and this is what? I got to depend on sending my children to school. So there's, when you come, they say that you can't sell. So I want to know what I want to do. But I can't sell for my children to send them to school. I have rent to pay. I have school blessing to um, pay. Plus, things to pay for sending them to school. You got anything to say, friend? 
Yeah, greetings. I'm a member of the human family in this country. I was born to raise in this area. I have secondary school, academics. I live in 17 countries, and this is my cultural religion. Chips. I was born into the army of Rabbi Edward Washington. I, I choose personally to upkeep this country. And there is nobody personally to take me out of this, and especially on this sea. I saw this sea while I know for certain before Ali. And it will stop being it. I'm five on one. You understand? And the policeman or whoever they get here can stop me because I saw this land the number is 18392. And they are not equipped enough to move me from here. So you, you will stand firm? I stand firm. I was born to die. And I want to get it clear. I was born to die. I would not follow. I'm a foreman of the African descent. They have to train on them. They got to send train to school. When they come out, they have to sleep in the day, go on the weekend. You know, they mean when I was over there, one day, thief, and me ever going to thief to kill me, if five children and wife fight God. And then they come out and they can't sell, you know what happened. You know what happened. You know what happened. That's why I allowed me to lie to me also. I got a wife and children for me and tea. And me and I got a thief. God, they ain't going to kill me. Just let me know. Big time. Anywhere we go, you know, police came and tell us we must go so. Yeah. Go so, go so, just so you know. So I had to ask him, I said, go so for what? He claimed that the president's wife said, I thought we ought to go so for now. So I so when my children got to eat, if I got to wait till they are finished, he said, yes. They're going to bring, what's with the guy name? The commando said he is a commando. A red skin one, I think it's Britos or whatever who he is. But I said to him, I'm not removing and go nowhere. Right? And he told me that we gotta go beyond Camp Street. So I said, and the children are right here. We're not blocking anywhere. We're not going into the play park. We're not farming anybody. We're just providing for the kids. Whereby the parents inside of there was telling us that. Telling them that it's unfair. What is it? These people is doing it. Any young guy turn and say, why so why they can't go in the corner or down there? You'll find some way put up. Yes, we try to do something. But Mr. Mayor, um, Mr. Narain, back in like three years back, the same thing they're coming to do. Every minute they're taking these people up here, trying them back so telling them they sell a car with a mobile onto now one of the vendors and get back the mobile they go until up the east coast. You gotta pay to get it. I'm a mother of 10 business, Mr. Ryan. And I portray my business, this small business here, in order for me to survive to go to school every day. Right? And I don't want a welfare to come to me to tell me that me send me to school and they give me $40,000. I get $40,000 and do anything. That is just checking That's seed like, money. Yes. Right? Because I just got to go in my pocket to make ends meet every night. I be out there. I just want to rest, Mr. Ryan. But I just gotta do it because it's hard for my children to have a straight meal and to go to school every day, right? And I need the world to see this: that we are poor people. We get an oil and still punish anymore. We gotta work twenty-four hours. I came back yesterday morning from Barbie's town. They just to end meet, right? We're the first person they're supposed to tell it over there to have one of those stalls they never did one day tell any one of us that they would give us a chance to have one of those stalls they take their business. own people and put them there and when they were opening there i heard the president's wife first lady said she said it's to the vendors up here she helped poor people and small business and i was standing right there saying it's a lie but because of the noise they couldn't even hear me right Next two days, we was back out. And Afro guy, this woman, she was, get back there, get back there. Just as, as I asked her, I said, I'm your child. I said, let's get how you find this, miss, you know. I send people squash the water for you, you know. Just leave me alone, mom. I'm not teething. And if, if you want me to do crime, I will do crime. But the first person I'm going to do is with you. I'm going to rob you first, and then I'm going to be the front paper. That's what I told her. Right? Because I have my 10 children. To go to my son, right? See, this is it. I'm going to eat. I got a pig. Every minute the teachers are sending for 
something. What do you think it is? Well, you got to see, Mom. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Ryan. Um, I'm a vendor out here, an ice cream vendor. I sell ice cream, homemade ice cream. And the only time I come out here is Sunday afternoon. When I come out here, the police would harass me. Um, Mom, you cannot go up here to sell. You cannot sell here. So where must I go to sell? And one time there was a ex officer. She barely get on her name. I which relationship? She was like, Madam, get off of this town. I come to town today. Come out there selling. Madam, get off of the town. She will respect to you. What must I do? Where must I go? What do you expect me to do? This is what I do for a living. I sell ice cream. I make my own ice cream and I sell. And she said, uh, Mom, I'm sorry, but I'm working with orders from the first lady. Whatever orders you get is what we work in. So I thought, we want to steal. You want me to go and pick a pair? You want me to go and rob people? I'm a single woman and I'm hustling for an honest dollar. I have bills to pay. My rent is 75000 I owe courts. I have a machine to pay for. I have a water bill. I have an internet light bill. And those are no easy bills to pay. And I come out here hustling for an honest dollar. I want to ask Mistress Ali, is this is the one Guyana that she's speaking about? It doesn't seem so to me. Maybe I misunderstand it. This is separation. I'm a Guyanese and I can't sell out here. I didn't come out here to live, but I have a bed at home. I just come out to make a little dollar so I can pay my bills when they want to sell. I want to ask her, is she a human being? Mistress Ali, are you a human being? You have love in your heart. It doesn't seem to me. You have children. Don't treat people like dogs and animal and expect God to reach you you know you have kids you have the money now but be careful because I'm gonna tell you this there is a God who sees and he don't like ugly and the life they have a turnaround be careful what all the money that you all have we're not supposed to be what's suffering out here <laughs> People suffering, we are suffering, and if we don't come out of us, we get nothing. Y'all have the oil money, one of the richest resources, we have oil. We have gold, we have diamonds, we have everything. And we have nothing, cost living all so high. And they're having the best. Well, and coming here and enjoying it. If we are the guys, and not harassing them. I want to ask a question now. The Brazilians are here. The Spanish people are here, the Chinese, and it seems to me like they have rights more than we Chinese people. They selling all over. They got a lot of rights. I want to ask you, Ali, what must I do? You play, you say that you are doing so much. You do so much charity. The charity that you are doing is for your friends and your family, your friends them. Now, if you already want to build something nice and give me a million dollars, then we're going to set the business somewhere else. Yeah. So we can move on. Are we going to come off it, Tara? Because I don't know when you come, you create this earth. I want you to know everything belongs to God. Yes, and it goes This earth right and everything that, even to the money that you have, belongs to God. And I'm very upset. I'm, a, I'm angry. I'm so angry. Because every time you come out, they harass you. Of the last night, when I go there, an Indian guy come and tell me, ah. Oh, you cannot sell here. You gotta get off of here. You can't even rest your foot in the park. If you can't even outside and you just sit a little turn around around but in the park, you tell to get I house. asked him who's in his his um Ali, the wife, president no. wife. You tell me how must we go ahead with this She wants to go and see for Robert. Thank you. You see? I'm a single parent. And this is where I get my order for all those here that you sell planted cheap. Any of these little activities, wherever it be, out this and we go, we get final, but out there be the worst. And we are not settling. We 
because the class you can award up when the pool is going to come I was fixing up my light to be just as you come I had to bust and sling she up like this just to move off to clean the pool and I have to join in my city I have to clean the pool so I could get somebody to look and say that I could be on that if I don't have a job out there where would I go and get it out there it's there more than 20 years to sell out there now we go up and see what's so fancy they push me aside and put faces they supposed to put this has got to be a stop it has to be a stop because it's everybody everybody have to do a honest dollar yes yeah in their own words folks that's the one Guyana that we're living in that's the one Guyana in their own words so are you deceiving people you said the vendors gonna have those kiosks to uplift what they're doing and then now it's friends family and favorite are you got no shame you know hypocrite 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 and as you folks mentioned the Venezuelans there, Jack, you playing games, I want you all know that. He instruct the police, put police here there. Put police here there. And now we run out. This is the PPP's play, playbook. This is the playbook. He instruct Hickens, who walk around behind them whole day, whole umbrella. Hold the holding umbrella. Should have gone off to retirement. So other folks in the force could be elevated. But he's still there. Taking up space. He ain't doing nothing but crime. He was instructed, put police on the vehicle. And now Jack, do you want us to believe? Right? He said it was... It was it was um ill-advised. He's another hypocrite. Prime hypocrite, as a matter of fact. He is a prime hypocrite. He would have, have us believe, oh um, he didn't know what happening. Like with Bobby Gusai, Administrative of Natural Resources. He didn't know what happening. He didn't know. Why is it in this country, like those vendors articulated, is everybody else first, but it can't be Guyana first, it can't be Guyanese first. Glenford Gordon, Sion Rodney, Forbes Medus, Andrew Griffith, why it can't be Guyanese first? Is it Chinese first? Is it Venezuelan first? In Jack, your book. Is everybody else for us? But Guyanese, we love our Venezuelan brothers and sisters. As brothers and sisters in humanity. But when you can come and say you can take this piece of land here, half the country bust down the middle, we got some problems there. Right? We got some problems there. You remember the man they want a little channel out? Same fella, same fella. Same fellow told them. Right? Same fellow told them. Put police on the vehicle. Same fellow. You can see the story just now. You remember? Oh, they can get a little channel out. You could probably, on the maritime area, give Venezuela a channel out to the sea. So you make a slight concession in the maritime area. You could probably on the maritime area give venezuela a channel out to the sea so you make a slight concession in the maritime area you could yep so you make a little concession a slight concession randy called randy thanks for the thing respect a man as randy <laughs> thanks for the thing who don't know debbie collins you make a slight concession. You put police here on the vehicle. A little slight concession. Not much. And now you get the public pushback. You get the public beating. 
you swim out. This commodity, you swim out. Oh, ill advised. It was ill advised. <laughs> He's a hypocrite. Yeah. That's what he is. He's a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite. Norton knows him. Put out a statement on this issue yesterday. Take a listen, folks. Take a listen to what Mr. Norton said. Aubrey Norton, leader of the opposition. How is hypocrite, Jack Dio? It was brought to my attention that Barrett Jack Dio is now contending that the police was instructed to remove from their vehicles police here. I think he is dishonest. I think he's hypocritical. It is more than three weeks since the opposition and other stakeholders in the society have been calling for the removal of police here. He never said anything. And now suddenly decided that he had given the police instructions. We are aware that the police is politicized. And if they were given instructions, they would have moved it. I believe he's caught off hand by the public asking, and he decided, like he did with Gozai, to throw the police under the bus. We must not believe it. For whatever reason, the government agreed for police here to be placed there, and now they recognize they have to move it. They should just move it and don't seek to blame anyone else. Yep. He didn't know. He didn't know the implications of police here because they see the guy in the police force. They're on a frolic of their own. Like Gosai. Bobby Gosai. At the Ministry of Natural Resources. He was on a frolic of his own. Vikram Barrett didn't know. Barrett Jackie didn't know. Nobody knew Hickens was going to instruct the police. Oh, these things are these things are happening in isolation. Hickens was going to instruct the police to put police here there. He didn't know. He didn't know. So now you have Maduro saying that everyone were mongering. And suddenly the Venezuelans said, Oh, the opposition don't, don't like them. Jack Dio has assured us. Of the channel out, a little slight concession, a little channel out, a little slight concession with police here on the vehicle. Jack Dio told us we don't have anything to worry about. You didn't hear the fella say that? Hold on. You don't see it, folks? You got it. <laughs> Forbes Borham himself, late executive president, he said it is important not only to read what is on the line. But what is between the line as well? Hear what one Venezuelan who met Mr. Jack Dio, you know, took to social media to say he was assured by Mr. Jack Dio they don't have nothing to worry about. This huge influx of undocumented immigrants, is Jack Dio bringing them. Take a look at what the man said on social media and take a listen. Hace varios días atrás se llevó a cabo una conferencia en la cual el líder del partido político de la oposición citó que están preocupados por la presencia de tantos inmigrantes venezolanos aquí en Guyana, lo cual desencadenó una ola de mucha preocupación entre dicha comunidad, los venezolanos, me incluyo yo, y también desencadenó algunos incidentes de discriminación en contra de dicha comunidad. Sin embargo, ayer 30 de octubre, por la tarde, en una reunión que se sostuvo en el Centro de Conferencias de la Nación, el vicepresidente hizo unas declaraciones súper importantes para la comunidad venezolana. Su señoría, el doctor Barrack Gardío, vicepresidente de la República Cooperativa de Guyana, asegura en nombre del Partido Progresista para el Pueblo que no están apoyando ningún tipo de campaña de odio, de discriminación o de xenofobia como lo hace el ACNU. TPP se rige por principios de unidad, de inclusión y de integración y de igualdad también. Entonces, habiendo dicho eso, el vicepresidente reitera, enfatiza y asegura que los venezolanos que estamos recibiendo aquí no tenemos que preocuparnos con el PPP, ya que ellos 
nos toman en cuenta, ellos están muy contentos con el trabajo, con la honestidad que hemos venido demostrando a lo largo de estos periodos, que podemos seguir trabajando aquí como de costumbre, podemos seguir llevando a nuestros niños a las escuelas, si nos sentimos mal podemos seguir asistiendo a los hospitales, ya que ellos se asegurarán de que haya inclusión e integración y cero discriminación, cero xenofobia, nada de eso con el PPP. Y ojo, aquellas personas que entren en prácticas indebidas, ilegales, serán penalizadas como cualquier otro ciudadano, como cualquier otra persona que entre en dichas prácticas. Así que aportarse bien. Así que yo creo que con dichas declaraciones que se hicieron en esa reunión el día de ayer, ya podemos estar un poquito más ciertos de lo que es nuestro futuro aquí, ya que estos días pasados fueron de mucha tensión, hubo mucha incertidumbre entre nosotros, entre los venezolanos, con lo que nos depara el futuro. Y bueno, gracias a Dios el vicepresidente se ha pronunciado junto al gobierno, junto a todo el partido político del PPP, demostrando una vez más su compromiso con todas las personas que residen aquí en Guyana, incluyendo esta comunidad venezolana, una minoría vulnerable de inmigrantes. Muchas gracias PPP, muchas gracias a todos los miembros del PPP, del gobierno actual de Guyana. Los queremos mucho y estamos dispuestos a contribuir. Una vez más, muchísimas gracias en nombre de la comunidad venezolana al gobierno de Guyana, al PPP. Estamos agradecidos de por vida por permitirnos estar aquí y estamos dispuestos a seguir contribuyendo. There you have it, folks. <laughs> oh. Our Venezuelan brother says that they have been assured of inclusion and integration. Yeah, you see, he's, he's the ambassador from Caracas, apparently. So you can come in by your thousands and so on. You see, we got you, we got you. That's what you <laughs> he said he was assured. <laughs> we got you. You don't got nothing to worry about, right? And give you a vote right next. See more judge, huh? M m my Spanish little rusty, policia. My Spanish, my Spanish little rusty. But I think he said something to the effect: "We've been in we've been assured of inclusion and integration." by the man who wanted to give Venezuela a channel out. By the same fellow who instructed Hickens, you put police here there so that our, so that Venezuela could understand what we're talking about. He says they've been assured, Roxanne Garraway. But it's up new. Don't like y'all. <laughs> it's up new. Don't want y'all to have, have Esikibo. It's up new. It's not me. I won't give you all the channel out. You see how I came in for you all with police and so on. They make it a little nice. I can take it down for now. But you're going to be voting soon. Don't worry. Right? You're going to be included soon. Integrated soon. Don't worry. Donna Beat says, Guyana for sale. We can stink dirty and dangerous. Jack, you're playing some dangerous games. He's playing some dangerous games. Dangerous games. Maduro says, Ali war mongering. Jack, you're telling the Venezuelans, we like them, is that what it? Right? He is the savior of the Vens. He is the savior of the Vens, Ingrid King. We love, we love of Venezuelan brothers and sisters. I wouldn't say anyone live without water, food. And we leave them unattended. Our Christian virtues, which is the same in Hinduism, in the same in the Muslim faith. You can't see people suffer and leave them because we understand as much as we do to the least, of them we do it unto jesus but this hypocrite jack leo this viper this vagabond 
this hypocrite, this Philistine and Pharisee, Jack Dio, this cross, Jack Dio, dangerous, Camille Cox, dangerous, dangerous. He said, we can include y'all, y'all don't worry. Y'all gonna be voting soon. Come by the thousands. We're going to integrate your, that's the word of Venezuelan brother use. More than that, give it a little channel out. You could probably on the maritime area, give Venezuela a channel out to the sea. So you make a slight concession in the maritime area. You could probably on the maritime area, give Venezuela a channel out to the sea. So you make a slight concession in the maritime area. You could let channel out. <laughs> so by Roxanne and Seymour and Brandy and Kyle and Orwin say not a blade of grass. Not a blade of grass. You give him a little channel. <laughs> this hypocrite, this Pharisee, this uncirc uncircumcised Philistine, uncircumcised Philistine, give him a little channel. We beg, Jack Dew. We beg, we beg. Deborah, Annette, Jacqueline, we beg. You got a turtle flesh, Shelly. Camille Cox, we got a turtle flesh. Wendy, Anessa, we big. Big. Why, Yana, we got sense, though. We got sense, though. We big and we got sense. You see? Jack Dio is for Jack Dio. You and I is Guiana first. Loving our hearts. For our Venezuelan brothers and sisters, our Suriname brothers and sisters, all of humanity. But Jack Dio, so Jack Dio first. Jack Dio first. Anybody else afterwards? You see where the investigation Bobby goes, Simon? How do one with Sue go in? Jack Dio first. Jack Dio for Jack Dio. The rest of us? Yeah, I'll wait and see what December 3rd brings. Then you're going to know. Then you're going to wake up. The who the man who won the channel, channel out. A little slight concession. A little slight concession. And some of our behaviors are unacceptable. I say it without fear of successful contradiction. There's reports circulating out there. Venezuelans being stripped and paraded in the streets someplace. Police asking folks to come forward if they have information. Police says in a statement they've taken note of a video circulating on social media of two Venezuelan nationals being coerced by persons unknown to say they were thieves and then being instructed to strip and to walk down the road. Reason though. Don't get no people no bad impression of us. That's not who we are. That's not who we are. We are a peaceful people. Struggling, we struggle. We don't look for trouble. Just ask around. That sounds nice. That could be like a lyric or song. That is not who we are. So I hope to God that is not true. That is absolutely, absolutely not who we are as Guyanese. It's not who we are. So I hope it's not true. But if it is true, policia, you all better prosecute them to the full extent of the law. If there's any truth to that, Policia, 
prosecuted in full extent of the law. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Let's touch on a couple other things we're following. Before we let you go, folks, a couple other things we're following in the 592. Policia, you got your job to do. You got your job to do. And that's what I did. Prosecute to the full extent of the law. Look how this water looking in LBI. I show when these when, when the Venezuelans see the water, they gone back home. They can say Maduro might be bad and all that, but we never have to drink water like this. We ain't coming for punish like Guyanese. Fastest growing economy, biggest GDP growth, high income country, and look the water. In LBI, folks, look the water in LBI. Y'all saw that? That's water coming through the tap in LBI. Take a look. Yeah, that's a head turner right there. So your vice president not meeting with GWI and so on. No, it's the Venezuelans you're meeting with to assure them that they can be included and inclusive and integrated. I know when they, the first time they turn on the tap, right? And they see the orange goal. It's gone to gone. And that's what the folks with LBI contending with. Good folks. That is what the folks at LBI contending with. Apologies. That's what they're contending with. <laughs> that is what our brothers and sisters contending with. Peace and power. <laughs> Fastest growing economy in the world, biggest per capita GDP. How are looking for us, dear friends? How are looking for us? And as we up on the East Coast, you know, businessmen are pleading for help. I stood there and listened to the owner of this sawmill talk about the length of time. He called on the Ghana Fire Service. He said the fire coming closer and closer. Right. Them boys took an hour and a half to come. Then with one hose with no water. One hose with no water. He's estimating his losses at millions of dollars. And his landlord, who he's renting the premises from, has also suffered some loss there. Biggest GDP, high income country, fastest growing economy, one hose. Everything now is in billions. Not millions anymore, billions. Billions with a capital bill. Pleading for help. Pleading for help. Listen to some of what they told our publication. Credible sources yesterday. Yeah, I'm Richard Hardin. I'm the owner of this um, entire lot here, along with the Lombayard, who have leased um, the guy Rohan, Rohan Lombayard. Um, yeah. I came here yesterday when the, owner, the tenant, my tenant, Rohan, called me. And he said, man, there is a fire coming across 400 feet away. From if, you, if you all have um, taken any picture on that side. Created by Ravage Heap, which despite many efforts to the NDC, several efforts to solve this problem, but we never solved it with the residents on that side of Haslington there. They always dump 
garbage. It's a, it, it, it's a sore area that, that never been addressed. And that were created billions of millions, maybe 30, 40 millions of losses here. Now, the fire had traveled from the eastern end, which is 400, approximately 400 and something feet from where we're standing. And all the way, and this man was calling the fire service from since about 10, 30, 11. The fire service said they have one, one engine or we fire, fire engine at, at Fowles on the East Coast. Um, they're out in some fire, bush fire or something. So the man said, any fifth time in 15 minutes, his yard will be on flames. But if you all come now, this will be avoided, which is a fact. You can ask other residents, other onlookers, other people who were here to verify what I'm saying here. Now, when I eventually came, I came, I came up, I was in Georgetown. I came up around 11.30 to 12, and there were two fire engines here. And the fire engines, I don't know, these men were just rolling out hoses and languishly and uh, on their own time. My point is, I was wondering why, so I asked them, I said, what's going on? You see what, what is man fire, uh, lumber yard actually on fire? And, 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 and this is your behavior. And they, they, they said, no water, low water pressure, low, all these type of things. I, I, and eventually, after an hour, when this man yard almost engulfed totally along with my machine, if you've seen it there, a case 680H bar, uh, barco valued about over $10 million, all melted, gone into flames, a total loss. So I'm saying that if, if the fire service had acted promptly and had the necessary resources, this, I'm serious, this could have been avoided. I hope the president um, is listening to this because these things has to be addressed. And I don't know who is responsible to addressing these issues. I think the Ghana Fire Service should be audited and they should have an independent body looking at these things, not the fire chief inv investigating themselves. They must have somebody come out here and, and doing like what I'm saying here and said, man, we have a problem. Or else this will keep reoccurring consistently all the time. And, and people will continue to have huge losses in this place, in this country. I hope that other people don't experience this same, a, a man stand up helplessly watching some fire engines um, doing nothing while Lumberyard burnt to the ground. I wonder if people do appreciate and understand the seriousness of losses, what goes through your mind, your mental. This man lost over 20, 30 million dollars in lumber. I lost my machine. I lost all my timber racks, lost, you know, everything. But why not grieve? And uh, what I'm appealing to the president, especially. Look into this scenario. Find out the truth behind the scene. I'm here to give evidence. I can substantiate what I'm saying here. This is not hearsay. This is not political. This is what we've experienced here. You ask the people in Enmore what went on here. And uh, I wish to God that um, this man can, the government can help in any way, in terms of cash flow, of, of, of bringing him back into business, because I, I don't know, he has no liquidity and, and I, I lost a lot here too. So I don't know what relief would be given. That's, let's look at the brighter side of it. And, uh, and the realistic side of it. And I hope that this can be done, like some sort of relief or help can be granted in terms of, of cash flow in rebuilding this lumber yard. And made, because this man is providing a service for all the householders in this area, community government NDCs organized as a main supplier. And, uh, and it's all local wood, we don't sell pine wood. If you've seen it here, we contributing to the, the local industry, the forest, creating jobs, doing all these things. We're not exporting all foreign exchange. We are investing it here. We need help, Mr. President, if you're looking at this. Okay, and thank you. Well, this fire started around 20 minutes after 11 yesterday morning. It started uh, behind the lumber yard. There is a lot of bush, grass, dry ones, and Exactly 29 minutes after 11, I called the fire station. The person told me that they don't have any fire tender right now, that the one is engaged at falls, and when it finishes at falls, it will come. 
we waited, we waited. I called my nephew, call back another five, ten minutes. Still the same thing, the girl replied. I called back another half an hour. She said, the one still engaged at Fouls, when it finished, it's going to come. We continue call and call until one came till one o'clock. That is from 11.29 till one o'clock. One came. Never have any water. So from one o'clock till three o'clock, then they started to doze, but all over been already lighted. All over the entire lamp, lumber yard, they got it. So initially it's till three o'clock, then water starting. And it's civilian mostly was doing the outing, not the fire service. I think we got some video clippings where we can share and show it exactly what transpired. There's only one fire tender actually was working. Only one was working. There were many, but one got to give one water. The other one got to give the other one water. Is three, they got to relay hours right through from a long distance. So it's actually only one. And then later on, I think two in the night till almost about near to 9.30. Then another one started. But everything actually they done born already, so it doesn't make sense. The way how the place situated here, if a fire tender had come early and spent 15 minutes, they would have saved this lumber yard. 15 minutes only with a little bit of water, if it's a half tank. Yes, I started, I called 11.29 and this place started 1 o'clock. It's one and a half hour then, one come and still not do anything here. I don't have any money left for restart. All the money what I had is this year I opened this lumber yard, January, and to now. I still have debt. I owe people all over in Linden, all them Samuel, I still. Folks, you heard that? In their own words, businessmen aside, I know sometimes businessmen get a bad rap. But those two businessmen, didn't cause a fire engine to come an hour and a half late. I know lots of you can say, they like bandung the building and claim insurance and so on. Right? Well, I brought in a terrible spot because the man who has the lumber yard didn't have insurance. At least that's what he said. So let me rule out. Born down for insurance. An hour and a half before the first tender came. And you heard him say, this fire started around 12 in the afternoon, just after lunch. The second fire tender came around nine in the night. Folks, oh, my God. The second fire tender came around nine the night. Folks, and more is about a half hour drive, easy driving out of Georgetown. About a half hour drive. The second fire tender. You heard him say, but the one tender got to give the next water with one hose. So when you hear a report that says, oh, they have 18 fire, firemen on the scene. But 18 firemen doing what? 18 firemen doing what? Doing what? That's the country we're living in. Fastest growing economy, biggest GDP, biggest bulges on the roads, high income country. That demand, I want you, I want you to understand what's happening. The owner of the lumber yard called the fire service about an hour before the fire got to his building. An hour and before the fire got to his premises, he saw it coming. It took an hour and a half after the buildings, the premises started burning. Take that in your fastest growing economy. Take that in your fastest growing economy. Remember that gruesome murder of Amrit Singh? Well, the man accused of murdering him. Yajendra Sahadio, 
remanded for that offense. You better watch who you are calling friends. Remanded for that offense. Watching to see where this goes. Some of the other things we're following, good folks. Terrible accident and cotton tree and bobies. There's a fatality. Passengers in the bus that was involved in this accident. Got some injuries as well. Carnage in our roads and waterways. You all talk about integrating people in this country. You all can't protect your own citizens on the road. We notice an uptick in the amount of people found dead in buildings. All of a sudden, found dead, found dead, found dead. Of course, Hickens walking around behind the police, the big sahib. Police work and doing. Mohindra Mohan. And as you go farm was found dead in the back dam. Back dams of Esquibo. Thoughts and prayers with Mahindra's family. David Jose found dead in a Pomeroon house. Yeah. That's how we got. David Jose. Dead in the Pomeroon house. That's the country we inhabit. Look at what church in we here. We lost three yesterday. We look in tin. The Elections Commission says continuous registration moving smoothly. Moving smoothly. Continuous registration. But you need to benefit the fellow said. Jack, you tell me everything will be all right. You don't worry. You'll be voting soon. Continuous registration, moving smoothly, moving smoothly. We're supposed to be heading to the National Assembly on Friday. We've been asking them for the numbers of immigrants, refugees coming over the borders. Can't get it yet. Can't get it yet. Yeah. Please make sure you register, folks. Go out there. Continuous registration. The exercise is ongoing. Make sure your name on the list. Make sure you're registered. It's spelled correctly, addressed, and so on. Everything intact. Please and thank you. Right? Because we cannot instruct them out of office. We'll have to order them out of office through the ballot. That's how we do it, by democratic means. And that's the sweetest means. So ensure you go out there and you get registered, brothers and sisters. Go out there and ensure. Jonas is on you. Get registered. Right? We got a lot of Difficult days ahead of us. That Venezuelan referendum is December 3rd. You know the folks are campaigning. Bogus referendum, fake and fraud. Jack, you say they can be integrated here. Right? Who are you for integrating? You're integrating. Oh, they have an inclusive government. They're all for unity principles. Can you treat your own properly? But you see, when people want to secure power, Neville Sita, Ingrid King, Isabella Butters, we know Cummins, when people want to stay in power, pass the Judith, they're going to do anything. They are going to do anything. That's going to do it for us this morning, folks. We're privileged to have had all of you here. Again, I want to apologize, Randy King and all the other folks, Ingrid and uh, Neville and uh, David and all the other folks joining us. Serena, internet problems last night, no fault of ours. You know, no fault of ours. By the time we finished calling the company, calling around just to make sure there wasn't us. Quarter to nine, we apologize. But these are the myriad problems that we face. People face all the time in this country trying to do a little business. 
blackout, blackout, internet connectivity problem. If you see what people get in, the far out you go. If you see what passes in, in Bajuk of internet, you know, Linden and so on. You see what passes for internet there. Folks, have a fantastic rest of the day. Roxanne Garraway, Will Felix, David Wood, Edward Brooms, and all the other folks joining us. We're going to see you guys in the next broadcast. Have a fantastic day. Folks, stay vigilant. Watch out for them, boys. That's our time, and that's our program. We're going to see you in the next broadcast. Shredded Innix, Diane and Maxine, Dorrit, Edinburgh. Good to see you, folks. Yolanda Thomas, thanks for joining us this morning, folks. Stay safe.